Hello, I am Professor S. Shankaran in the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. Um, hello everyone, uh, let us continue our uh, discussion on this uh, introduction to this mechanical behavior of materials, right? Uh, if you look at what we have seen so far, uh, we looked at uh, the stress at a point and uh, we also looked at a strain at a point uh, in much more detailed manner. And then we also uh, looked at uh, the plane strain condition, plane stress condition and so on. So then we moved on to uh, elastic, uh, uh, I would say stress strain relations, right? Uh, on the basis of uh, linear elasticity theory, we looked at uh, most of the uh, simple relations and constitutive relations and then uh, from the constitutive relations, what are the other relations you can um, make use, of, I mean you can derive uh, involving various uh, material constants like Young's modulus, shear modulus, uh, bulk modulus and so on, right. So uh, we will just continue that and um, so one of the constitutive law we have just seen is uh, Hooke's law, right? I said that uh, we have also uh, looked at this uh, Hooke's law in a more generalized form, right? So uh, this uh, generalized Hooke's law can be uh, used to account for multi-axial loading condition as well as material anisotropy, okay, very important uh, point, okay? Suppose uh, we can we can clearly show that in a multi-axial condition, for example, any material subjected to uh, different uh, type of loading, I will just show up just in few slides later. I will show some general state of stress in a day-to-day -day life examples. So, in such conditions, uh, this generalized Hooke's law only is being used. So, I will just recall this again, generalized Hooke's law. It can be uh, written like this in a tensorial notation, epsilon ij is equal to S i j k l, okay. There is a typo here, it is i j k l, not double j, i j k l and sigma k l, where S i j k l is a compliance tensor, okay. Similarly, we can write for the stress sigma i j is equal to c i j k l times epsilon k l, where c i j k l is elastic stiffness. If you recall, we have just gave uh, some introduction about tensor quantities and this elastic stiffness, we just, uh, we described that as a fourth rank tensor quantity, okay, this is what it is. So, we now know how many constants uh, it will have, right? We, we just looked at the formula, right? 3 to the power n. So, this is a fourth rank tensor quantity. Suppose if you expand, um, you would uh, get 9 equations each with the 9 terms. So, total about 81 constants, that is what it is, elastic stiffness, right, in all. Since uh, epsilon ij and uh, sigma ij are symmetric tensors, only 36 of them are independent and distinct terms. So, we have also introduced this uh, terminology, symmetric tensor, right? So, you do not have to worry about it. So, we have just had some introduction about all these terms. So, we will just see how uh, these uh, uh, constants, constants are uh, uh, evaluated and this is for uh, isotropic uh, materials, all these relations. The situation is complicated greatly when the material is anisotropic, wherein the elastic constants vary as a function of crystallographic orientation. So, this is very important point we have to remember. Uh, when the material exhibits anisotropic, that means even in a, a real th material, uh, you take a cubic systems. You all know that uh, uh, we mark different directions in a cubic system, whether it is simple cubic or uh, 
body centered cubic, face centered cubic, you all might have undergone an exercise how to mark directions using uh, Miller indices. So, if you recall all this, you know, uh, you also talked about uh, material, I mean, not material, atom uh, populated in each type of plane, right? For example, 1, 0, 0, what is the planar density, atomic packing density? And if you look at 1, 1, 1, what is the atomic packing density and so on, 1, 1, 0 and so on. So, in each direction, the packing density is going to be different and similarly, you are uh, the stiffness constant is also going to be slightly different. So, that is why uh, we are talking about anisotropic uh, material or anisotropic uh, uh, nature of the material, right. So, since this is the case for practically for all crystalline solids, it is important to consider a general loading condition as shown in figure. So, we have already seen this, uh, this uh, figure is most familiar to you now. So, this is a general case where the where we describe the state of stress in three dimension. We can consider this again. So, you have the three mutually uh, orthogonal uh, normal stresses and then shear stresses are marked on the respective plane. And uh, we see that there are three normal and uh, six shear stress components. However, since tau y x and tau x y and tau y z is equal to tau z y and tau x z is equal to tau z x. So, so as to avoid rotation of the cube, only 6 independent stress components remain that determine the strain of the body. So, this also we have already seen, just uh, we are going to just recall because we are going to see uh, um, what is this. So, the, st the strain in the strains in the each direction may be given by this kind of uh, equations. So, I am just giving you these equations not to just scare you or something, but uh, you should understand what is that what is that we are talking about. 81 constants, how it is coming to 36 and then how it becomes you know uh, a 6 normal stress and shear, shear stress and so on and how this um, equivalents are realized. So, you have this strains on each direction and you see that it is uh, each direction uh, normal stress and the shear stress components, right. Totally you have about uh, 6 independent stress components, right. So, all 6 are here. So, it is 6 is for each uh, direction, right. So, where uh, this S i j, you can see that S 1 1, S 1 2, and so on here S11, S21, S31, so on. They are called elastic compliances. And you can express the same thing for uh, stresses, right? Because that is what linear elastic theory comfortably shows that. So, in terms of stress, these are the equations. And what is Cj, Cij? This is elastic stiffnesses, right? So, we can now think of uh, uh, using this relation for a real system. So, the reversibility of elastic strain leads to the fact that S i j is equal to S j i and C similarly C i j is equal to C j i which reduces the number of independent material constants from 36 to 21. So, uh, we have also looked at the similar reversibility in the uh, shear stress condition, right. Similarly, in st elast elastic stiffness and compliance uh, coefficient also, the reversibility rule is applied and which further reduces the uh, cons independent constants uh, from 36 to 21. This is the point you have to remember. As a result of symmetric consideration, the number of independent constants decreases further to, uh, further with 9 constants required to describe the elastic response of an orthorhombic crystal, 5 for hexagonal and only 3 for cubic material. So, uh, life becomes simpler once you bring in lot more um, parameters which can be you know similar in all orientations. For example, symmetry, when you consider symmetry, it gives uh, further reduction in number of independent constants. For example, for a hexagonal system it is 5 and only 3 for cubic system, okay. 
So, the for the later systems the elastic compliance matrix reduces like this instead of um, 6 by 6 uh, it is it is still remains a 6 by 6, but then you have lot of components uh, become 0 because of the symmetry consideration. So, it is S i j is equal to S 1 1 S 1 2 S 1 2 like this only these two uh, stiffness constants uh, of course, 3 S 1 1 S 1 2 and uh, S 4 4 these are the 3 uh, constants which uh, is able to describe the anisotropic nature of the crystal in uh, of uh, in a cubic crystal. So, it can be shown that um, for the case of cubic crystals that the modulus of elasticity in any given direction may be given by the equation in terms of these three independent elastic constants and the direction cosines of the crystallographic direction under the study. So, this is the one expression uh, we can use for finding out the uh, I would say the anisotropy or uh, the describing the elastic modulus in a cubic simple cubic system ok. That is 1 by E is equal to S 1 1 minus 2 times S 1 1 minus S 1 2 minus half S 4 4 multiplied by L 1 square L 2 square plus L 2 square L 3 square plus L 1 square L 3 square. This, this you know that what it is direction cosine right. So, uh, so what, what I was trying to uh, tell you by giving all these things. Uh, we just got introduced to the linear um, you know elasticity theory and then how it describes uh, st uh, stress strain and its relation and uh, how it uh, validates for an isotropic material then what happens to anisotropic material and how these elastic constants uh, are evaluated. Just give you a feel of you know not just you know showing equation, but just uh, you get, have a grip of you know how these equations are useful in real systems. So, that is what I, my intention. So, later probably you can do some problems uh, involving this, uh, we can calculate uh, elastic modulus uh, for uh, particular given direction for different crystal systems, then you will appreciate this uh, concept much more um, easily. Okay. Uh, having uh, gone through a uh, lot of uh, expressions uh, for uh, stress and strain and relation and so on. Now, we will we'll come to reality. I am just showing some of the uh, real time applications where we can uh, show the common st states of stress. Uh, I have shown some very colorful picture here and what is this uh, uh, equipment? This is a, a sky lift basically a sky lift. We will just go through one or two components here. Um, and then try to understand what is the state of stress. For example, you see the rope here which goes through this pulley and drive this wheel right. Similarly, this rope and there is a, a rotating shaft here which rotates of course, when the wheel is rotating this rod also will rotate, but we can just uh, try to get some grip of uh, what is the state of stress here. For example, this uh, particular uh, rectangular box which is showing this rope, what kind of uh, stress it undergoes? It undergoes simple tension, okay. it just pulls right, it pulls the, the drive wheel just rotates in this direction, so it, it just pulls. So, the rope is being subjected to a simple tension. Uh, okay. So, this is what we describe uh, a simple tension and the wire will have a cross section, the cable will have a cross section A naught um, and we know this expression very simple expression sigma is equal to F by A naught and um, a simple tension. What about this uh, shaft? Suppose this rotating shaft, this is a torsion, it undergoes simple torsion a uh, form of shear. Okay. So, we know now um, what is shear, shear component of a stress right. So, how do we describe them? This is what we describe them. This is a physical picture, a drive shaft of uh, diameter 2 r and this is the moment right, uh, shear in this and this is a cross section and this is the notation we have already seen for 
how to uh, represent the shear stress right so this kind of uh, notation is if you recall this is a positive shear stress so shear stress again um, shear force divided by area okay so this is a simple i just want to give a feel of a real time um, application uh, a sky lift okay and uh, next one we will show some simple compression you can see that uh, this is a, a bridge it's a hanging bridge we will we can look at this uh, small small iron strips which is being um, connecting these two uh, big structures uh, uh, curved structures and uh, this linear structure and uh, and there is another example uh, it is a, a rock a huge rock sitting on this uh, small uh, pile up of a kind of a cliff here which is there in this national park and uh, very nice photographs uh, but we can just uh, think about uh, element from this a region and uh, this rod what kind of uh, stress it undergoes it undergoes a simple compression so we can represent this uh, by this so compressive stress is a, is a negative stress right so that is why uh, we look at this and uh, this is what is this this is a pressurized uh, tank so just think about what kind of uh, stress it can experience mm -hmm. so pressurized tank experiences this kind of a stress force what is this they are all positive stress but in both direction that means biaxial okay biaxial tension okay that is a real time and what is this there is a fish in the uh, fish tank okay fish and or water whatever it is what it undergoes very nice picture so this is the symbolism uh, what does it mean it undergoes a triaxial state of stress okay what kind of uh, stress it is a compressive stress okay but in all uh, di direction we have also have another name for this if it is there is no uh, shear term what is that called you just uh, you have to recall we have just uh, shown the matrix also right so this is hydrostatic stress hydrostatic stress but it is in the compression mode so hydrostatic compression so like that you can just uh, you know uh, connect uh, day to day uh, applications or whatever the you, you come across you just think about what type of stress it undergoes it will also give uh, a very good you know feel for this subject right if you start thinking or connecting you will not find it uh, uh, more mathematical or equation and so on so it will be uh, interesting okay so uh, now that uh, uh, we have described the kind of you know state of stress and strain and we have looked at uh, relationships uh, uh, simple relationships and now we go to properties because uh, at the end of the day with all this knowledge we knew we should try to understand and relate these uh, uh, theories to the understand the properties of the material that's our aim right so first we look at elastic properties so we we have now gone through elasticity now we look at elastic properties okay what are the elastic properties you all have some idea about elastic properties you, in a day to day life um, we you have you know n number of things uh, which we use from uh, every day uh, every material right it will undergo a lot of elastic deformation take some simple things uh, like what i demonstrated in the uh, introduction video all materials change in shape volume or both under the influence of an applied stress or a temperature change okay so uh, this is what um, we try to describe even if you remember when i uh, showed this condon morse curve right 
uh, where the potential well diagram, we talked about two things. One is uh, uh, potential energy, another is we, we related that curve to the force and also we brought temperature into the discussion. That is because that also can influence interatomic distance. Okay, that is very important. That is why uh, applied force and uh, temperature change can bring a change in shape, volume or both in any material, very important. The deformation is called elastic if the stress or a temperature induced change in the shape or volume is completely recovered when the material is allowed to return to its original temperature or state of stress. So, this also you know very well now. Uh, any material, any type of force you apply irrespective of state of stress or if you remove the force, if it retains its original position, then it is completely recovered elastic elastically got recovered right elastic energy got recovered something like that and similarly the temperature right we have uh, we can see in uh, in the future class some of the examples right even a temperature dependent uh, behavior material behavior. for example shape memory they are all related to this okay so in crystalline substances the relationship between stress and strain in an elastic region is typically linear very important look at the statement carefully in crystalline substances the relationship between stress and strain in an elastic region is typically linear whereas non crystalline that is long chain molecular materials generally exhibit non linear elastic behavior so it is not necessarily that uh, stress is inversely proportional to strain that is a linear relation may not be valid for all kind of material now you know why we just started with uh, a different kind of bonding and structure and so on. Now you see the moment you change from crystalline to non-crystalline or long chain molecular materials for example uh, polymers, this linearity is no longer exist. So they exhibit non-linear elastic behavior. This is exactly shown in this uh, two stress strain diagram. So, uh, stress versus strain and uh, the material undergoes linear or uh, response to the stress up to the point A. That means beyond this point A, the material will no longer behave elastically. That is the limit. Okay. Similarly, you see that uh, it is an interesting curve. So, it is not linear but it is still an elastic region, uh, it all the way up to point A, it undergoes elastic deformation, but it is non-linear. So, non-crystalline long chain molecular material will exhibit elastic behavior, but not linear behavior. Okay. So, yeah, this is what uh, theory of uh, linear elasticity try to explain this uh, on uh, atomic basis. Uh, of the behavior observed and deals with uh, proportionality between stress and strain on a macroscopic scale utilizing elastic constants. So, this we will see what is that.